Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video on the channel where today we have got a 4 triple 2 formation guide and for me, right now, I would say this is the best formation in the game, period. So if you do want to see more videos, make sure you do drop a thumbs up, make sure you do that subscribe button as well if you do enjoy the content. If you do have any questions about this formation or any other videos, make sure you do tweet us and we'll get around to answering them as quick as possible. Also, do drop us a follow on Twitch as we do want to stream eventually, so hopefully you guys will follow us there. But without further ado, let's go into the instructions first. Now, the goalkeeper, for me personally, I always like to use my goalkeeper on sweeper keeper. Um, every now and again, obviously, people do put balls in behind, and you do want to have your keeper there to be able to sweep up. Obviously, the better goalkeepers you have, um, the, the more effective this will be, but sweeper keeper is something I would always recommend for your goalie. Now the fullback, obviously we've got Malqui and we've got Florenzi and we have them on balanced attack. Now we did cover this in our attacking and defending tutorial. Now if you did see those videos, you know in the attacking tutorial we had our fullbacks on balance and in the defending tutorial we had them on stay back while attacking. So what we mean is if you are someone who is a confident defender, if you think, yeah I'm a good defender, then I would recommend using balance for your fullbacks because there will be a, a lot of opportunities where you will be able to get forwards and it's just having that extra man forwards, especially in this formation, is really, really key. If you are someone who struggles defensively, then I recommend having your fullback on stay back while attacking. Because this, with the instruction and the tactics we've got, it is quite an offensive formation. Um, and the way I play, I play with them on balance and you do leave some space in behind. You can see on this example, Malqui does get drawn into the ball a little bit and it does leave space in behind for the winger. Obviously, you can see the uh, the space in behind for him to exploit. And that's what I mean. If you do play on balance, you will get situations like this where you will get countered. It's just something that's going to happen. But you do reap the rewards. You can see we're 5-1 up in this game. You do reap the rewards going forwards. So it's definitely something to, to tweak with, to play with, and uh, just see what suits you. In terms of the two holding midfielders, we've got Nangolan and we've got uh, Paqueta, obviously not the best players. Uh, well, Nangolan's not too bad, but Paqueta could be improved on. But nevertheless, we've got cut passing lanes and stay back while attacking for both these DMs. Their, their aim is just to really patrol that midfield like, like some gladiators. They're not box-to-box -box midfielders. Their aim is kind of more to protect... Um, especially because we have the fullbacks on balance who are going to be getting forwards and attacking. It's really important then that those DMs do uh, those DMs really do sit back because sometimes the centre backs will kind of split and the midfielders are able to kind of then just drop in and you're still kind of able to have that four in defence. So it's really important that you do have those midfielders on stay back while attacking. You can see a really good example here of obviously we're in kind of like a transitional attack alley on the wing. Most people would expect us to slip that ball into Caputo, but you can see our two midfielders, how open they are. They're always open for a pass, um, especially when they're on stay back while attacking. They're not bombing forward. They do always give you that option um, for a pass to be able to just, like we said, in the attacking tour, recycle the play. We end up getting the goal with Caputo. So you can see how open those midfielders are, and they're always able to, they're always showing for a pass, which is really, really important. So you're able to retain the possession, like we said in our attacking tutorial. Now, the two wide cams, well, we've got Berenguer and Ericsson, but I actually sub Berenguer off and I use Deli Ali. But these two cam positions, we've got free roam um, on both of these guys, and that's really, really important. Free roam is an extremely powerful technique for you to use this year in your in your instructions. Um, it works really well with kind of all cams. Last year it only really worked, I personally found, with central cams. Um, I was using this on the beta and it was super, super effective. Um, you're, you're, those two guys are just, they drift all over the pitch. You know, you have to have guys that have got good stamina. That is really, really important. But they drift all over the pitch and it's really, really important that those guys have got good stamina because they do kind of get gassed out, especially when you'll see we get into the tactics. But you can see here in a really couple of really nice examples how our attacking midfielders, which as we mentioned were Ericsson and Deli Ali. This time around you can see Ericsson at the bottom of the screen, all that space that he's in, you know, and he's just able to just exploit that space and then get the finish. The, you, these cams, I would say, as I mentioned before, are probably the most important positions in the uh, in the team. You've got to get these guys right. You can see this time Deli Ali at the bottom of the side. His hand going forwards, one in the pass. You can see the space, how much space there is. And that's because when they're in this free roam position, they're really, really difficult to pick up because they're kind of they're not wingers, uh, but they're not real central midfielders. So it's really difficult for your opponent to know, uh, especially the AI, it's, it's really difficult for them to know who should be picking them up. So that's you can see Ali again, right in between four defenders. is just 
No one really knows who to pick him up. He's able to slide the ball into Correa and unfortunately Correa can't finish it. But that's what makes these cams really, really effective because they just drift all over the pitch. They pick up really difficult positions. It's really... You'll find that your opponents as well will really drag their centre-backs out to sometimes come and close them down. Obviously, if they drag their defenders out, that leaves space for you to exploit. So they are very, very crucial and free roam is super overpowered. The two guys up top, Correa and Caputo, as you've already seen in a couple of clips, how effective they've been. And they've kind of just been uh, rewarded for the work of the rest of the team. We've got them on uh, balanced width and getting behind. The reason why we're using balanced width and we're not using uh, we're not using them on stay central is because of those those drifting cams. Sometimes those cams will drift in field. If you if you tell your your strikers to also stay central, you're then going to have a really narrow attack. So it's it's important that sometimes when those uh, cams will drift inside, it's important then that your strikers drift outwards. So then you've always got a good balance of width and also some players in the middle of the pitch. Again, you can see that this time around, these two strikers, we've got, I think this is Dagbert on the ball, who's just kind of biding his time before, again, we just get tired of him having the ball, so we just got to take it off him, and then Caputo's just looking to just slip him behind the defender, you can see he's brought his defender out, and it just makes it really, really easy for us to score this goal with Caputo. So that's what's really, really important, this team really blends, it's really important that when you're building instructions and tactics, that you build them to all play the same way, and really kind of melt together, and that's what we've done with these instructions. So going on into the tactics, we decided to use press after possession loss. Now, this is something that I really found super, super useful, especially on the beta. The reason why the press on possession loss is so effective is because stamina right now doesn't really get drained very highly. Now, as we mentioned with the two attacking midfielders that we're going to be using on free roam, those guys, when you play them on a press and free roam, you still need guys that have got good stamina because the press and the free roam, that does drain them a little bit. But the rest of your team doesn't really get drained too much in stamina. I've not had too many situations really that I can remember at all where my players have been gassed and, and, and I've needed to sub them off. The playing on a press is really effective because, as I said, stamina doesn't really get drained right now it might change um, when a patch comes out maybe they might drain it a little bit more but as of right now stamina is really high so you can play on a press um, it does mean like i said as we've seen in some of the fullback clips that you are going to get exposed a little bit and caught out but ultimately for me personally i think it's worth the risk even if i do concede a couple of goals as you saw in that uh, a couple of those clips there we were sort of 5-1 6-1 up i don't mind giving up a few chances because i feel against most players i'll outscore so it really depends on your attacking style and how good you are attacking should defend should depend on how attacking you go with your inst instructions and tactics width and depth um i don't really think this is too important this year i've kind of played around with this a little bit um as again on the beta and so far on the game i don't really think that you should vary too far from kind of the default um I don't see that there's been really any benefit to going super high or super low on any of the um, on any of the instructions, the width, depth, the players in the box, nothing. So I typically um, on the beta and so far this year, I've kept pretty standard, sort of around five, six, never really lower than four on anything, but never really higher than six. And that seems to work um, especially well for this formation. It seems to have a really good balance. So then the last but not least, we decided to go for long ball on the offense. Now, this is something I want to play around with a little bit more, but um, from what I played on the beta, as I said, I had a, a massive success with this this formation on the beta, and so far um, on the on the on the game so far. But long ball seems to be the one that suits. I don't really want to go fast build up uh, with this formation. With some of the players and the instructions we've got, it's already a very very attacking formation. Add on to that pressing on possession loss, it's a very attacking formation. So I don't really think that going fast build up and making it even more gung ho is necessary it's already uh, pretty attacking you can see we're scoring plenty of goals so long ball i think is the way to go it means the rest of our team can kind of stay quite compact in defense and uh, just those strikers and those attacking mids who, who are kind of really drifting all over the place can really pick up the ball and uh, and run in behind and run in and utilize that space so that is it for this four triple two guide. Now this is one of my favorite formations, if not my favorite formation this year. And uh, it's definitely something I would recommend all you guys at least trying with these tactics and instructions. Because uh, so far this is probably my favorite formation and I've had massive, massive success. I've only lost maybe one or two out of about 15, 20 games on this. And on the beta I played about 35 games with these tactics and obviously with some better players as well. But I only lost one game. So it's very very overpowered and for me 
best formation in the game as of right now. That could change in the future, obviously, if the game does get patched, that could definitely change. But right now, definitely the formation I'd recommend. So that is it for the video. If you do want to see more formation vids, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. It would be much appreciated. If you have any questions about this formation, make sure you do drop them in the comments or make sure you do tweet us and we will get around to answering them as quick as possible. But that is all for today, guys. Have an awesome day. I'm out.